This special episode of Scientix CV is brought to you by the GSMA and the Back to School campaign. This September, find out about STEM jobs of the future, the hot skills of tomorrow, and join the GSMA competition to innovate with technology. Check out the STEM Alliance website to learn more and register. Hello STEM enthusiasts, welcome back from your well-deserved summer break. It's time to think again about STEM education to thank the teachers for their work, to connect them to STEM industries, and to highlight the work of European Schoolnet's Ministries of Education. In short, it's time for the new episode of Scientix TV. The Back to School campaign is concentrating on STEM careers and the skills required to pursue these careers. There's many STEM jobs around and many more appearing every day. To help teachers address the topic, we're going to be talking to experts from across Europe on STEM careers and STEM jobs in education. We're going to have the policy advisor to the Greek Ministry of Education and Religious Affairs, Vicky Kochikopoulou. We're going to talk to Albert Thorn, who's the director of M Schools at GSMA, and we're going to talk as well to two teachers that are part of the STEMIT Career Advisors Network and their amazing teachers. Now, to talk to all of them, we're going to have today a co-host. We have Romain Leute, who is a, who's been working as coordinator in, in the Impact EdTech project, helping EdTech startups improve their solutions. Romain, thank you very much for joining, and how was your break? Thank you, Agata. Thank you for having me. It was a great break, and it felt good to just close the laptop for a couple of weeks. Definitely. Now, we're talking about STEM careers today. So the first question, of course, is why should we talk about STEM careers from very, very early ages? Well, Agada, STEM is present in our daily lives. And many of the major issues that the world society face can be connected to STEM subjects. So clearly, we do need STEM professionals, which means we need to encourage kids to study STEM subjects but those can be a little bit more challenging than other subjects, especially in early school years. Um, when we asked teachers on Twitter, 65% of them said that students do not get enough advice on STEM careers. Today, we're joined by two people who are changing that. Let's welcome Vicky Kotsikopoulou from the Greek Ministry of Education and Mario De Moro, a teacher from Italy and a winner of this year's STEM Discovery campaign. Thank you both for joining us. Let's start with a big question to you, Vicky. How can we interest students in STEM careers? Thank you, Roman. Thank you, Wevan. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to participate to Scientix TV. Um, getting back to your question on how to interest students in, in STEM fields, uh, you already gave us a hint on talking about, you know, how to uh, to incorporate the daily life routine. And um, in a way, I would say that it is exactly that. We have to stop these interesting children as they grow up. Because children are interested in what is happening in the world. They want to save the world. And school just needs to provide them with the skills to do so. What I'm saying is what you're saying, that STEM subjects are not boring. They play a critical role in our society. And uh, edu STEM education provides the great opportunity to engage them in a meaningful way. So what do we do in Greece? In Greece, we have, for instance, introduced skills labs, where through four new societal pillars related to societal subjects, to critical subjects like climate change, well-being, social empathy and accountability and innovation, STEM and experience-based learning play a key role. Because when we go beyond this traditional lesson and the textbook, when we provide hands-on experience and we link to, to the real world issues, STEM is fun. And uh, there is no better way to, to explore, for instance, climate change, but through experiments or to relate math to daily life. Of course, we need well-trained teachers to achieve this. And we also uh, have an extensive training program with digital pedagogies to, to help the teachers to create thoughtful lessons. And I'm happy to say that we have also got uh, the European Schoolnet support uh, towards this goal. 
Thank you very much, Vicky. That is brilliant. I, my keyword here would be experience-based learning. That is truly Im important in, uh, in teaching STEM. Um, now, Mario, to you. You recently invited three STEM experts to your classroom to talk about STEM careers. Can you tell us more about that? How did your student respond? Well, uh, Roman, they were quite thrilled. We all know that uh, students feel more engaged if they have an active role. So we asked them to tell the expert about the research they carried out uh, in the project. And so um, after that, their mates co-chaired uh, the following expert interview I met at uh, discovering their STEM profession. And when it comes to uh, highlight the key aspect of STEM profession, the cover sheet of STEM IT and STEM Alliance offer a great deal. And so each expert talked about their job and perspective. And so the student curiosity was satisfied and so was their will uh, to be part of the project. So this was a, a great experience for us. It sounds indeed like a very exciting exchange and a true unique opportunity for you students. Um, now, Vicky, I must ask, how can governments in that way bridge the gap between schools, industries and academia? Indeed, thank you, Roman. And I would add how they bridge the gap between schools, industry, academia and civil society, if I may say. How, in, in, in other words, do we foster innovation? Because closing this gap is, is the future of this much, much needed innovation. We need to connect the classrooms to this ecosystem, in fact, to the local communities. We need to facilitate all um, exchanges between industry, academia and civil society. Again, I would take you back to, to the novelty of the, of the skills lab, because there we, we have uh, done something unique. We, we enrich the educational content from several resources that are coming from universities, international organizations, the industry, and civil society bodies. This is, um, this is a very, the very important aspect for us, and the teachers are actually embracing this, and uh, from, from the evaluations, we got very, very good results. Another aspect are the, the collaborations through a number of hackathons and competitions that also serve this goal, and they help schools embrace this change and foster collaboration with community leaders and members. Very exciting collaboration uh, that, that, are, that are happening. And of course, most days teachers uh, have to do without an industry representative in the classroom. And in this regard, Mario, how can teachers stay up to date with the recent developments in the job market? First of all, as a, a member of STEMIT Career Advisor Network, I would like to highlight that we already have some brilliant advice from industry about how to get in touch with experts. But if you ask me, I would say that teachers should start browsing networks that link schools and industries at local level there are lots of professionals that are keen on their jobs and they can trigger the interest of students in STEM careers. They could also help teachers to recognize the most important STEM skills to enhance a pupils' chance of occupability. I think that this could be a good strategy. Thank you very much, Mario. And I believe you do have a question to Vicky as well uh, about STEM being a global industry. And do you have maybe advice for teachers for them on how to uh, contact professionals and connect with them? Yes, I, I would like to ask uh, uh, Vicky, um, since STEM is a global industry, do you have advice for teacher who wants to connect with professional in other countries? Thank you, Mario. Um, I would say that EU is the answer. You know, we have Erasmus+, Teachers Academies, Knowledge Alliance, 
EU Code Week, the EU STEM Coalition. There are so many EU initiatives to help teachers and they have been uh, helping teachers for, for many decades now. So I would say that we need to further communicate and incentivize teachers' involvement in that area. Greece has benefited extensively from Erasmus Plus the, the last three decades, helping both students and teachers um, acquiring these transversal skills. And we think uh, we need to, to continue doing so. Thank you. Thank you very much, Vicky. And I also believe you had one last question that will be directed to Mario regarding empowering girls and STEM careers. Can you exactly. tell us more? Exactly. This is this is my favorite topic. Um, I was interested to know um, how how Italy is doing because studies show that the decision to follow a STEM career starts in the classroom and is directly linked to teaching. So how do you and your colleagues empower girls to, to overcome gender stereotypes and pursue um, a career in STEM, Mario? Well, the, uh, this is a riveting topic. I think we should uh, uncover the attractiveness of STEM careers. And um, uh, in this way, uh, we could uh, uh, let uh, girls and parents uh, uh, to know uh, which is the uh, key role of STEM in improving our lives. And uh, in this way, uh, we could also um, uh, challenge some uh, gender cliché. And uh, one way to do this effectively could be to um, uh, embed some uh, uh, successful story of women that uh, have been played a relevant role in STEM fields. I think that this could be a good idea. Absolutely. Female as role models, I see Vicky nodding as well. So mm -hmm. you do think that these can be a, a nice way to involve more girls in, in STEM studies. Uh, so thank you very much, both of you, for, for joining us today. It's been a real pleasure to chat. Thank you very much for all your answers. Agueda? Thank you very much, Roman, and thank you very much, Vicky Cochicopoulou and Mario de Moro, a teacher from Italy and our policy advisor to the Greek Ministry of Education and, and uh, Religious Affairs. Now, they've been discussing quite very good examples and solutions that we can be used. And one example of interesting careers is uh, the jobs that exist in the area of space or aerodynamics in this field. There's more and more opportunities coming up. So I'm actually liking the idea of connecting now with uh, George in Greece, who's going to be doing an experiment that can help kids understand more about air travel. So George Rungos, can you make us fly, please? Hello, everyone. Uh, today, we will explore the effects of aerodynamics and, more specifically, Bernoulli's principle in aviation activities through the flying ping pong ball uh, experiment. Bernoulli's principle is the most basic knowledge in aviation and can explain all the flight phenomena within Earth's uh, atmosphere. The materials needed for uh, the experiment is uh, our uh, hair dryer and some ping pong balls. That's all. If I turn on the hair dryer and uh, direct it to the ball, uh, you will think that uh, the ball will just bounce away immediately. But Bernoulli's principle states that an increase in the speed of air occurs with a decrease in pressure. So, if I turn on the hair dryer and try to balance the ball, the ball stays inside an invisible column of pair. This happens because the hair dryer produces a high uh, fast flow in air and creates a column of uh, low air pressure. The surrounding air, uh, which has uh, higher pressure, keeps the ball inside this uh, column and the ball uh, flows. This is Bernoulli's principle, which shows how, plane, how planes uh, stay in the air. The air 
above the wings has a lower pressure than the air below the wing. This experiment is a very good way to get students engaged in aeronautics, aerodynamics, rocketry, or aircraft design. Thank you very much, George. I really love how your experiments bring science to life. We're now moving on to connecting classroom with real life world jobs. And for that, we're talking to uh, two other very special guests. And we have our colleague from the STEM Alliance, Ivana Kovac, connecting with them. Ivana, who do we have today? Hello, Agata. Well, today I'm happy to introduce you to Stella Magid Podolsky and Albert Forn. Alberti is the director of M Schools, which is an initiative run by uh, GSMA. M Schools shares news, new ideas, learning resources, and tools that use mobile technology in the classroom. Stella is our teacher from Israel, and recently she ran an award winning activity with her students, guiding them towards space related careers. And Stella is also a teacher trainer, and uh, she has many years of experience in getting industry involved in the schools where she has worked. Stella, can you tell us something more about the recent activity you had with your students and what can other teachers learn from that? Yes, of course. So this was a long-term activity which was based on a field trip to the Checkpoint Company where students visited the control room of the Rekia mission to space a few days before Israel's uh, second astronaut, Ethan Stiva, took off toward the International Space Station. During this field trip, students conducted several experiments imitating those Tiva was about to conduct in space. Uh, then students had follow-up activities at school and at home, and they uh, were exposed to STEM careers in space. And my advice to other teachers planning to introduce their students in STEM career orientation, use the resources which are provided by STEM Alliance and STEMIT project to create the framework for a short or long-term activity according to the cultural or scientific aspects of your country. That is amazing, Stella, and it seems that your students were uh, involved in some really cutting-edge jobs over there, right? And uh, Albert, talking about the jobs, jobs that we have today did not even exist 10 or 15 years ago. What, how can teachers help students? How can, get, how can they get them prepared for the future jobs? Yeah, it's true. A lot of these skills are new, <clears throat> and it's amazing to see how teachers such as Stella are, are bringing them into the classroom. Uh, these skills that are in very high demand, they have a lot to do with how we use our minds in, in sort of creative and analytical ways. Um, you know, how we apply our intellect to solve complex problems, but also um, how we find powerful ways to work with others or use social skills um, to lead uh, multidisciplinary teams. So, you know, these things are very important, but we must not forget about the capacity to learn uh, and the flexibility and resilience that are needed also for these jobs. Uh, these are things that are very important and much more valuable to, to employers than just the degrees or the CVs that they receive on their tables. Um, so, you know, teachers can adapt to this and they can adapt to this by transforming what happens in the classroom, um, by empowering students with better opportunities for collaboration, for teamwork, for problem solving, critical thinking, creativity, coding, exploration and self-learning. So these are, you know, key pillars to, to what we need to, to do in the classroom. And, and you know, Stella proves that that's a, that's a, it's a good case to, to look at. Um, you know, many teachers are already taking advantage of this, um, you know, such as what we do in M schools, which is basically introducing new ways of teaching into the classroom that maximizes these skills and, and allows kids to explore them and to learn them uh, very quickly. Maybe, you know, Stella, I don't know if you coincide with me, but as a teacher trainer, uh, do you think teachers need to better prepare for these in-demand careers? And how would you do that? What, what do you need? Do you need resources? Do you need training? You know, what are the things that you need as a teacher to be able to do this? Okay, so I, I think that there isn't one specific answer. And that depends on the teacher. We should encourage personalized instruction for teachers. So, for example, there are teachers uh, that need complex training where they can be exposed to resources and uh, where they can have very structured guiding. But while other more independent teachers might benefit only uh, from being exposed to some innovative methods and then continue the process by themselves and find the best way to assimilate those methods in their teaching learning processes. Personally, speaking, I think it is very important to expose students to a variety of STEAM careers and to expose them to role models from the industry. 
And Albert, what can industry do to help teachers' professional development? And especially when it comes to those with schools with limited budget, how can we help teachers prepare those students? Yeah, these are important things. Um, you know, the good news here is that a lot of enterprises and private organizations are already offering resources uh, and training for teachers uh, who want to, you know, get on this transformational path. Um, it's also good news that you don't need a lot of expensive technology to be able to prepare for STEM careers and, and richer and broader skill sets. You know, getting STEM into the classroom, uh, it's not about having cutting edge technology, but more, you need some of it, but not all of it. You know, you don't need to go and deck out the schools with everything. Um, you need more about things about such as computational thinking, inquiry-based learning, problem solving. These are the, the concepts that you need to bring into the classroom. You know, obviously uh, connectivity is very important uh, and this is something that you really need, but more technology doesn't necessarily equate to better learning outcomes. It's much more relevant on, you know, and important how we use what we have than how much we have spent on the technology itself. Uh, a lot can be done if, if, you know, with very little, if we do apply uh, the right pedagogy and methods and, and this is, you know, something that we've tried to do, um, not only in the sense, you know, M what M-Schools does with, with the industry, but also with the government and, 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 uh, and, and pri public-private initiatives. Um, so and these are areas where I think innovative proposals from the industry can be real game changers. Um, they can support teachers to bring modern STEM initiatives into the classroom and do something which is so very important uh, in this, uh, to, to promote STEM careers, which is basically motivate students to study STEM because they find it interesting, they find it relevant, and they find it fun and attractive. Um, so, you know, I don't know. I mean, Stella, with regards to industry, um, it can be intimidating sometimes to to try to get, reach out. Do you have any advice for teachers trying to reach out to industry? How would you how would you do this, and what have you done in the past? Yes. So my advice refers to the present and to the past with the help of social media. In the present, you have students and they have parents. So try to figure out if there are parents who are connected to industry. From my experience, there are always parents, industry partners who will be very happy to assist. And also in your social media, we have a lot of friends from the past whom we follow. There is a high chance that some of them are connected to industry or STEM. And I figured out that these people care deeply about the education and are often glad to collaborate. And of course, you can always email an industry representative. In the worst case, nobody will answer. But from my experience, there is a considerable chance to find industry partners this way and even form long-term collaboration. And I also did it several times and it works, so good luck. Luck. Thank you both for, for joining us today. And I think that your advice will really be very inspirational for many of our teachers. Thank you very much. Agueda? Thank you very much, Ivana, Albert, and Stella. It's amazing to hear all of you. Now, unfortunately, that's it for today. But uh, a few things. One, if you want to learn more about STEM careers, check out the STEMIT repository of STEM job profiles where you will find guidelines videos you'll find podcasts and lots of many different things that you can actually use in your classes with your students second don't forget to comment on social media now if you use the hashtag scientix tv and especially if you use twitter instagram and or facebook we have a bit of a surprise for you now we're looking for the best comments on what we did well uh, what you like and more importantly what could we do better so comments that actually address those two things we'll be looking at them and the best ones will be getting a super cool scientist notebook now it's a special notebook it's an infinity notebook that actually can be reused finally in case you haven't heard we do have the scientist conference taking place in november the 18th and 19th of november that's friday and saturday 18th and 19th of november and the registrations to participate will be opening soon there'll be a limited number of places so we recommend keeping an eye on the scientist digest and to find out when we open them and finally just a big thanks to all our guests today coming from many different countries in europe and all their expertise thank you for joining scientix tv the show where you can see the world through STEM glasses. See you again in October. Have a great time and goodbye.